Hey folks, today we're going to be looking at these old hard drives I picked up on eBay. These are interesting, at least to me, because they are the SCSI format. So you might be used to something like IDE or even SATA. But if you're like me and you were just using consumer desktop PCs, you know, back in the day, you probably didn't interact with this SCSI stuff very often. And I can't think of a better way to test these SCSI drives than with this. <laughs> a Sun V120 from 2002. In fact, this is the only way I have to interact with these drives. So usually I'd use something like this IDE or SATA to USB adapter, but I can't find anything like that for the SATA interface. And so we're gonna have to go use the real deal here. I bought seven of these drives on eBay. I got a pretty screaming deal on them, I think. They came out to like $3.50 each. They're untested, of course. Uh, the seller, judging by the way the seller packed them, I'd say they're definitely untested. Uh, I don't even think they knew what these things were. But this B120 also came with a Sun branded SCSI drive that I haven't tested yet. So what we're gonna do first is get this in there. It's got its tray on and everything. And I'm hoping there's an OS on here that we can use and then we can start testing these other ones in Bay 2. Worst case scenario, this thing's got some onboard diagnostics I'm pretty sure we can use to probe all the drives and see if they're healthy. So basically we'll at least be able to see if they're working, but ideally we'll actually be able to see if there's anything interesting on any of these. So let's get into it. All right, quick aside, looking at these old drives, I got to talk about hard drive names. So if you make hard drives, you got to give them a good name. This one's like 10 years old or something. WD caviar green. Okay. Caviar, like nice. I guess this one's a caviar black because of the label, I guess. And then Western digital just totally gave up. This one's from a couple years ago. This one's a WD blue as in the color blue. This one is named after the color blue. Look at this old one, the Seagate Cheetah. We've got the Maxter Atlas 10K Mark V. We've got a Hitachi Ultra Star. Like, look at this, like a designer got involved here, you know, for the better. The Dell Constellation, IBM System X. Last but not least, the Water Panther. Okay, before you come after me, I know Western Digital, some genius marketer was like, well, bucket them into colors, purple for surveillance, red for NAS. But you're gonna tell me that the purple one shouldn't be called like WD Protector or something like that? Like. When I open up a new hard drive, I want to feel like I just entered a sci-fi novel. But anyway, back to the drives we're going to look at today. So I've got three of these Seagate Cheetahs. These are from 2004, as far as I can tell, from the date codes on some chips on the back. All these drives in the lot are 10K RPM, so pretty impressive. They're all SCSI Ultra 3. Uh, I think that's something like 320 megabytes per second. So if you compare that to the fastest IDE, which was like 167 megabytes per second, these are pretty impressive given given the time period we're talking about. And then I've got three of these Maxter Atlas 10K fives. Looks like they're all 146 gigabytes. Again, Ultra 320 SCSI. These are from 2005. All three are from this exact same date. So I, I believe they're pulled probably from the same environment. And then we've got this no-name Fujitsu drive uh, from 2006, I think. And yeah, zero, zero out of 10 on the naming Fujitsu. Doesn't even have a name. And then of course we've got this Sun branded SCSI drive from 2005, also 10,000 RPM. It's a 72 gig model. This came with the V120. So the first thing we're gonna do is slide that into slot one. Hopefully we have an OS running there. And then we can one by one go through these and get them in slot two because it's hot swappable and it'll be fast that way. And we'll see what we've got. Interesting note about these drive trays. Here's a Sunfire X2200 from 2006. So four years older than that other one. And uh, does that look familiar to you? I'd say they are identical, <laughs> except that the V120 requires this bottom plate and a little bit of a design flaw, as you can see from the damage. Again, that sun attention to hardware detail, got all of that. So yeah, I'm gonna pull one of these out to use for the second bay, because I don't have another one for the V120. Back at the V120 here. So this is the drive caddy that goes with this guy, and you can see it's all scraped up. It, it's meant to slide in here on these fins, 
And clearly they scrape the crap out of this metal. Not that you'd really be pulling drives very often, I would hope, but uh, yeah, that's kind of a bummer that that happens. And here's that other drive bay from the newer machine I was talking about. It fits, uh, I, th I think it'll work, except that it won't have a metal plate on the bottom protecting it from these. So yeah, we'll see. We'll get this first drive in, see how things are going. I might just throw some tape on here so that I can use this one and leave the primary drive in, assuming it works and it's useful. All right, got some electrical tape on that bay because if a drive is in one of these trays from the other machine, it doesn't have any protection down here and I wanna make sure none of the electronics are scraping against those fins. All right, here's our setup. Got that sun drive in bay one. They sit sort of recessed because the front bezel covers them entirely. And then I've got the special cable, not a little bit of a improvement from my home home brewed one earlier. So this is a Cisco secure console cable. They're pretty typical in the industry, especially back then. And it converts this DB9 over to an RJ45. So on the back of this Sun V120, there's a special LOM port and it happens to be an RJ45 connector, but it communicates over serial. Even without a hard drive, we'll host something called the LOM or lights off management, which will let us interact with it. So we got our hard drives over here, ready to party. We're gonna go through those one by one. We'll get the serial cable plugged in to the test unit, recording the screen so you guys can actually see what's going on and let's fire her up. All right, here we go. And the LOM is happy. I think we can do something called probe SCSI. Oh no, that's not good. All right, we're gonna go for broke. <laughs> I think I misunderstood some documentation. Let's turn this thing on. Doing this little boot sequence. Ooh, it sees the disc. Let's see. <laughs> it has a copy of Solaris from 2008 on it. I think that's Solaris 10, 510. <laughs> okay, the trick will be, can we log in? Don't know what that means. That seems bad. Ooh, it doesn't like what's going on on that disc. <laughs> it wants us to run some disk repair stuff. All right, I'm gonna go do a little Googling and see what I can do about this. Okay, I've pulled the disk. I'm gonna try to get it just to go to the LOM prompt and not boot, and then see if I can get it to boot to what's, not, what's called an okay prompt. Okay, we're at an okay prompt. So we should have something called probe SCSI. We do. Let's throw this back in there. I'll try probe SCSI now. Haha, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> it knows about it. This is cool. Okay. Let's let's rack up one of these other ones and get it in this second bay here. Alright, we're gonna start with this Fujitsu drive since he was the odd man out. Let's probe SCSI again. Uh oh, helps if you type it correctly. <laughs> Look at that, it found the other one. Incredible. All right, so that one works. This isn't very exciting, so I could go through and, you know, put all these in and probe them. But I know that that one works, I know for sure that one works, so let's see if we can get Solaris on one of these and we can actually see if these things have anything on them. All right, so this video is about to get a lot more interesting, at least in my opinion. So at this point, I had started to Google how we're gonna boot this thing over the net with Sun's proprietary system called Jumpstart. And let's just say I was getting a little discouraged at the prospect of that working as I was reading the documentation. So I did in fact go through each of these drives and I did run the probe SCSI command from the OK prompt and incredibly, every single drive was able to be detected by the machine. Doesn't mean the drive's fully functional, but it also means they're not totally busted. So that got me a little bit motivated. So what we're trying to do here is boot Solaris on this machine over the net in our case, mount this drive and try to run some diagnostics and repair it and hopefully get it booting again. Typically what you do is you just have your Solaris CD, you'd have a drive, you'd pop it in, you'd boot from the CD and you'd go to town. You could mount this, do whatever you wanted. I don't have Solaris Media and I don't even have a drive in this machine. <laughs> so that leaves us with Jumpstart. So 
Again, Jumpstart was Sun's way of booting this over the net. We'll be able to do the same thing as if we were using a CD just over the network. So I dove in and I got a Jumpstart server running in my Solaris VM in my Proxmox instance. And just to give you an idea of what I was dealing with here, we're running shell scripts from like the early 90s. So, But I did indeed get it working. And so from here on out, it'll be me actually jumpstarting onto the server and seeing if we can get this drive working. And worst case, we'll throw Solaris on one of these other drives. Holy crap. I have been messing around with this for like two hours. And I think I just got it to jumpstart. So, oh man, I have no idea. I'm thinking this is a VT100. Oh my goodness. So the drive is out of the machine. I think I'm net booting from, or a jumpstart booting, I should say, from over there. And oh man, let's see if we can repair this hard drive. So right now we're net booting Solaris with Jumpstart, a system from the early 2000s, maybe late 90s. And look at this. I don't know. That looks great. So there's no disk in this machine, obviously. I want to get to a command prompt so that I can throw this disk in there. This is quite elaborate <laughs> for a console application. Um, I'm, look at this, it's got paging. I'm pretty impressed. Can you imagine being the guy that worked on this? Yeah, okay, it's complaining about disks. So we've dropped into a command prompt and it can't find any disks. Let's look at, I think it's config admin. Yeah, look at that, okay. Let's do config admin. Configure C0. C0 should be our sun drive. Okay. Oops. Sorry, there's no backspace. <laughs> okay. Connected, configured on the SCSI bus. I did not expect to get this far. So to recap, I'm trying to repair the file system on that sun drive. Let's run F6. How do you say that? F-S-C-K? I don't know the pronunciation of that. The error message from before said we need to run this, so we'll see what it does. Okay, so it thinks the disk is healthy. All right, long story short, I think the sun drive was part of a series of drives that were replicating to each other, and I just have one of them, which does make sense that it was probably in slot two. I only got the one in slot one. It does have Solaris on it, but it's it was complaining about I need to run SF check, did that, everything was fine. And it's also complaining about insufficient metadata database devices located. I don't know really how to fix that. So I'm not going to wipe him yet. <laughs> In case anyone out there knows, comment below. I'll put the errors on the screen here in particular. Can I, can I save this drive with just this one? I'd love to save this install. So I'm not going to mess with that. We're going to sacrifice this. Fujitsu drive and throw them in there and see if we can't jumpstart Solaris onto it, you know, just for fun. All right, so same story as before. We got this thing net booting and got to the point where it couldn't recognize the hard drive. No surprise there. Solaris is super particular about the format it wants these drives to be in. And a lot of the times the installer will just choke and act like it can't find drives until you format them manually yourself. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'll be back when this guy's done. It took over 24 hours to format this drive, <laughs> that Fujitsu drive in there. I should say it took about two hours to format it and another 20 plus to verify it. So yeah, I think that's a lot larger than what the software on here was designed for. And just as a side note, this thing pumps out 80 dBs of sound when you're standing next to it and it's running. So it was like that for over a day in here <laughs> so i couldn't really be in here uh i think 70 is what starts to damage your hearing so anyway we're gonna pop this guy back on get it net booting from the jump start server again and we should be able to install slayer on that drive our ultimate goal here all right so here we go this thing has power and we're at the lom prompt here 
And I'll give you guys kind of the whirlwind tour of how this works. If you're interested in a more detailed jump start video, let me know. So I'm going to switch over to the screen recording and let's hop in. Instead of a BIOS like an x86 system, these Sunfire Sparks had something proprietary called the Open Boot PROM. And the way you get to that is you tell the LOM to boot forth. <laughs> and I think it was called forth because it was written in the fourth programming language. So this is going to tell it, you know, boot to the open boot PROM, which is also known as the OK prompt, instead of trying to boot to the drive, because we know there's nothing on that. So then we'll power her on. All right, so here we are at the OK prompt, otherwise known as the open boot PROM prompt. And now we can tell it to boot over the net. So let's say boot net install. All right, and then if you hit this, there was a forum post from 2009 from a user named Incredible, and this is what you do. You, of course, say set defaults, and then reset all. And what do you know? <laughs> this thing is netbooting from our Jumpstart server, so obviously it doesn't understand the boot drive, uh, so it's skipping to the net. And I am going to time lapse this and we'll come back with hopefully an install of Slaris. All right, seeing the screen is bringing a tear to my eye because I've been fighting with it for like five days, but. I'm also horrified that this is going to take another 24 hours. I just got to say this serial console progress bar thing is so awesome. All right, it's booting from the disk now. Solaris is so different from Linux and anything else I'm used to. I don't know what loading SMF5 service descriptions, 175 of them anyway, probably all the services it has to run. Uh, yeah, let's. it's booting from the disk. This is not over the network. You can see that it found the host name V120 that I configured on the Jumpstart server, not on this machine. It picked that up from the install settings. Let's, let's see how it does. Okay, we're about to log in. Yes, we did it. We have installed Solaris over the net onto this machine. Yes, we have done it. We have installed Solaris over the network onto this 17 year old hard drive, which is sitting inside this 21 year old Sunfire. And I couldn't be happier. All right. Huge milestone for the channel. We have Solaris running on a physical hard drive on an actual Sunfire. <laughs> Only took me a month and a half. I've teased it before and I'm going to tease it again. I've got these Sunray 2s, these thin client things that need software running on a Solaris server. I've also got a pack of these smart cards, which theoretically you can slide in. You log in right away, your session's on the server, you pull it out, you go to your other workstation, pop it in, and you're in business. So, very excited. That sounds like it's going to be a total nightmare to set up as far as I can tell, but it's going to be very cool if I can get it to work. So, I'm also the proud owner of no less than eight SCSI drives from the early to mid-2000s. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to see what was on these drives. We know there's a Solaris install on this. So please, if you know anything about resolving that issue, let me know. We sacrificed one. So this guy got formatted no less than 24 hours later. I've got the other six. I want to know what's on them too. I need to do some research to figure out how I can mount and look at those with Solaris, or maybe there's other options. Maybe I need to get a PCI card or something for another machine to be able to probe and take a look at those in Linux.
I'm not sure, open to ideas there, but they all appear to work. The machine can find them all. Pro tip, put a sticky note whenever you're testing stuff because I might not look at these for another five years. And it's good to know that in June, 2023, probes because he worked on this Maxter drive. But anyway, I know this was a little bit of a ramble uh, and we started looking at hard drives. Then we went to jumpstart for Spark Systems, but hopefully you had fun following along. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.